he's asked us to call him Ty, because he's such a regular, terrific guy. But he, so Ty, come on forward, if you would, man. And he wants to address us on the subjects of talking to anybody about anything. How's everyone today? Is this good? Isn't it crazy how it always rains on the weekend, but work days are like bright and sunny when you're locked in your office or anything like that? It's crazy. crazy. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for letting me be able to talk to you. It's a really big honor. Uh, so my name is Dr. Tyron Wells. You guys can just call me Ty. I've been here a couple of times. A lot of familiar faces here. That's great. Um, I have a hobby where I think I can talk to anyone about anything. And that hobby or project is called street epistemology. Have you guys ever heard about street epistemology before? All right, so uh, street epistemology, it's a very, very complicated term, in my opinion, for something that's very, very simple. The way how I like to think about it, the, the street epistemology is just talking to people without sounding like a jerk. <laughs> it's literally that simple. Just asking questions without uh, getting anyone upset, making them defensive, and allowing both parties to investigate how they arrived at a conclusion. At street epistemology, it's just an informal way to ask people how did you figure that out? And that how did you figure it out is what we would call an epistemology. It's how you came to a conclusion. And the street aspect of that uh, just refers to me going outside on the streets, literally not a street, maybe like the sidewalk, a really nice park or something like that. But college campuses, uh, I've gone to political rallies, I've gone to protests, I've gone to churches. I've done some here at Sunday Assembly. I've talked to some of you guys here as well. Great chats all around. But the idea is that you're talking to someone about how they arrived at a conclusion. And why I think this is important is because I think it's going to change the dynamic of how non-believers communicate with believers moving forward. And I'm saying that because, I'm, and I'm an atheist, we kind of have a bad reputation <laughs> for having these kinds of conversations with people who believe in a God. What's a productive way to have that? So if you go on YouTube and you look for um, atheists, theists, have a conversation with each other, you're gonna find a bunch of videos where people are having debates with each other. And the thing about a debate is you're not really talking to each other. You're talking more to the audience and you're setting up logical traps and you're very much firm in your position. You're not really open to changing your mind. Uh, there's a lot of arguments on YouTube too where people are throwing out personal barbs, getting personally invested in their conclusions and not allowing themselves to think critically about maybe they, the other person who's arguing with me might have a point or not. And I love listening to arguments. I, I, I watch arguments on YouTube all the time. I can do that all day. But is there a better option? And I think street epistemology is that. I think it's going to give us the tools to allow anybody to talk to anyone about anything. I want to show you guys what street epistemology looks like today, and then also tell you guys how to do it. But first, let's go over a quick little cut example. This video will be a collection of clips that myself and another street epistemologist named Reed Nice Wonder who's situated in California, his channel's called Cordial Curiosity. Uh, stuff, videos that we've been doing over the past week, or past year. And I wanna highlight the, the positivity and the productiveness of having street epistemology as opposed to arguments and debates. Let's go, next slide. Come on, you can do it, there we go. Yeah, so yeah, just have this hobby where I chat with people about anything. Uh, is there a particular belief you wanna chat about? Is there what? A particular belief that you wanna chat about. Um, something you really think is true? Christianity. Yeah. All right, anyway, yeah. Uh, Ty is my name. I've got a five minute timer. Okay. Only if any two people can talk about anything. Is there anything that strongly motivates you? Anything um, that you think God. is true? God? Yeah. That's a heavy topic. You want to talk about that for five minutes? Sure. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I can talk about. I mean, I was. My background is Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, I was raised Southern Baptist. I believe in God, so I, I, that would be the thing I'm, I'm the most certain about. Okay. First, got to get a sense of your confidence that okay. God exists. Okay. Say on a scale from one to ten. Uh, ten. Ten for sure. Ten. The existence I, I, of God. I mean, I am yeah. 100% certain that higher power exists. Okay. Um, 95. 95. Mm -hmm. All right. Very confident. From like zero to 100%. 100%. 100%, you don't need any more evidence, you're absolutely close on the position, you think that's absolutely true? Yep. Okay, 100%. What got you to that 100%? Uh, really, well, uh... So, I go to a Christian school, and I've learned, I've taken a bunch of classes on um, theories and all these different things, and it just makes sense to me, it kind of like hits home. 
I, and for me, it's just a meditation thing that okay. I realize that it's just, it's just a, a, a full on total goodness of the earth, mm -hmm. all the plant. Um, I believe that there is something that has been working on my behalf in this universe. Whatever is here had to come from somewhere. Okay. Uh, it's hard to imagine coming from somewhere without some sort of first cause. Okay. okay. Yeah, I know it's hard to think that, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, how does something making sense to you relate to the actual truth of it? So, like, could someone actually be mistaken about a belief that makes sense to them? Yeah, I think they could. Okay. That is a uh, very good point. I would say... Hmm. So you, oh, that's a that's an interesting perspective. So you believe that, wow, I've never ever heard that before. Well, that's an interesting, you, you know, we've come around to an interesting point that oh. I never verbalized to myself before, but I do see that, you know, I'm starting to see just from this discussion. And the benefits right, I get from it. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's a good I would like perspective. To, I would like to believe it if it's true. Right, but but yeah. because nobody can question it, nobody can prove it, you can't prove faith, you can't prove any of these things, it's like, why am I believing this? Hmm. <laughs> you may be onto something, man. Yeah, so that's just, powerful yeah. stuff, man. Thanks, yeah, it's just stuff to think about, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that, that's really enlightening. I, did, I never thought about it like that. That's true. Right. That's a good way to look at it. I like to think about it that way. And that, anything, that puts you in a more reasonable position. Hmm. Well, thanks. Yeah? All right. Cool. Have a good evening. It was you good too. chatting with you. Good chatting oh. with you as well. All right. Have a good evening. <laughs> Have a good one. Cool. You guys see the difference between maybe that and an argument or that and a debate? It's very chill. And the secret behind this is you don't even need a table or a YouTube account to have these kinds of conversations. I'm hoping by the end of this talk, Every single person here will know the key points to have these kinds of conversations with anyone about anything. Whether you're, you think a certain, if you encounter a person who's closed-minded about what the best Marvel movie is, which we all know, right? Right? <laughs> and, oh, uh, that's a B plus for me. We can talk about that later. <laughs> or if they believe in a God or not. So, which tends to be one of those topics that we've been trained not to have those conversations about, but it just turns out we just need to have a, a method to do that, and I think this is the best method. So let's talk about tips to have a good SE conversation. Uh, let's see, next slide. Come on, you can do it. There we go, nice. All right, my three tips for having a really good SE conversation. The first one is keep it positive. As you can see in those clips, it's a very, very positive conversation. And the reason why that's important is because when you're done with those talks and the person walks away, they're gonna reflect on the conversation that they had. And you wanna have that be done with as little bias as possible. If they can easily dismiss all the points that you guys reached together by saying, ah, but that guy was a jerk. <laughs> Just forget about it. Uh, it, it it's, it's a lost opportunity. So never go to the point where it will be heated or it will be incredibly uncomfortable for them. Leave it on a positive note because that makes them more encouraged to have these kinds of talks with someone else in the future or maybe with you again. It's definitely important. No, nope, I said conversation and that's the second point. It needs to be a two-way street as far as both of you guys learning stuff. SE, in my opinion, is not a teaching technique. It is a strategy where both of you guys can work together to explore belief. And because of that, you need to be open-minded to whatever that person's giving you. If they say, hey, I thought I was abducted by aliens last night, there's that small chance they could be right. You're not there to tell them why they're wrong. You're there to explore how they came to that conclusion and whether or not it's reliable, if they use a reliable way to get there or not. Uh, the last point I think is really important is let the person do the thinking. Let them think. Uh, it's in the same sense of you can't go into a conversation thinking that you're right and that you're going to tell the person why they're wrong. That's going to be reflected back on you. They're going to think they're right and they're going to tell you why you're wrong. Neither of you guys are really going to meet on an even ground. Being open-minded and allowing them to think is an important point, but also giving them the opportunity to savor or sit on some really important you know, uh, points that, or youth, uh, epiphanies that you guys reach together is really important. And sometimes all that requires is for you not to say anything at all. 
There's a, there's a tip or a word, a phrase that we use in ESC called the pregnant pause, which is literally where one person is just quiet <laughs> while the other person is just thinking to himself or herself. And that tends to be the most powerful point because a lot of people never just get the opportunity to think about the things that they believe. And if you can just be there as an unbiased judge or like a coach and just give them that opportunity to think, amazing things can happen in as short as a five minute conversation. I wanna actually show you guys a full SC conversation, a little bit slightly edited. Uh, this is a, this is a, it's really cool how you make friends doing this too. And uh, this is my friend, uh, or not my friend, but a guy who I met at a park at Lexington at a place called the Arboretum, it's right next to the campus. It's a really beautiful walking ground and I just set up one day. Uh, Jacob came by and he wanted to talk about God. And I was like, that's great. So let's have a conversation about his God belief. These, I'm passing around some business cards you should have my contact info, but let's go into the actual video. That should be flashing. So hi, okay. I'm Ty. Hi. Nice I'm Jacob. to meet you. Nice to meet you. So I got a hobby where I set up a table mm -hmm. and talk to people about whatever they want to talk about. I think okay. it's really cool to show that, you know, any two people can talk about anything, regardless uh -huh. of the color, whatever. Big size, how rich they uh -huh. look, doesn't matter. Uh, normally the conversations that we have are really cool when they're centered around what someone really strongly believes or a philosophy uh -huh. they have or something they wrap their lives around. If you okay. want to talk about that, we can talk about Marvel movies okay. or your favorite junk food. <laughs> All right. But is there anything that you really strongly believe is true or something you're confident about? That's can a, I also fit something and ask your name again? Oh yeah, Jacob. Jacob, I'm Ty. Ty. Uh -huh. Jacob. That's a big question. Um, well, well, I'd say I'm a Christian, so okay. that, that's probably my biggest um belief uh um, there are a lot of beliefs in <laughs> yeah 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 you're right um, would you just say like the I, god exists maybe yeah 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 okay um, i believe in in one god and that is uh this is a sons. really heavy topic yeah yeah, yeah, it is. yeah yeah <laughs> they're in middle school class by the way <laughs> okay yeah, yeah how confident are you that jesus and god exists all right I'd say 100%. 100%? Yeah, I'm going to define 100% and just let me know because yeah, uh -huh. it's a number. And, I yeah, hate, yeah, yeah. and you can change the number. I don't care. But 100% to me is like... Like no doubt. No doubt. Uh -huh. There's no way I can be wrong. I'm not asking questions anymore. Uh -huh. I am certain closed-minded on the position. I'm closed on the position. 100%. Let's go 98%. 98%? <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, everybody has those periods of doubt, right? I think so. Uh -huh. And I think it's actually healthier to not be absolute yeah, about what uh -huh. you believe. What got you to the 98% confidence on this God and um, Jesus? Yeah, I'm just yeah, going to combine them yeah, both. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, or like on the existence of the Christian God. That, so I'm, a, I'm actually a medical student, mm -hmm. and I found a big interest in biology when I was in high school. There's like one big hypothesis out there called the RNA hypothesis. RNA world theory? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that because RNA can act as like a catalyst and also uh, as a way to store information, biological information, that might have been what was initially um, used as, as protein in DNA. Right. Um, but like when they, do you know uh, the Stanley Miller experiment? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they show that if you put like RNA in one tube R and make it rapidly produce itself, it can make like little tiny monsters of itself. Or well, like simplified versions of RNA. The one I'm thinking of is that they put a whole bunch of um, nucleotides. Sorry for the trip. Well, you know, you know, you're fine. I'm just. Uh, it, it's been a while since I've read it. So like they tried to recreate the uh, the oceans of the Earth mm -hmm. and like this in this um, small environment, and then they would like zap it with. Um, electricity, sure. Um, to kind of uh, simulate the <laughs> simulate the um, environment and atmosphere of the Earth um, mm -hmm. four million years ago, right? And they show that they can actually make some um, molecules that are essential to life, some amino acids, right? Um, and like urea, formaldehyde, stuff like that. However, the amino acids that they make are only like lysine and very simple nonpolar sure. amino acids. So they mm -hmm. haven't shown that they can create more of the complex amino acids that are needed um, to sustain life. And they also never showed that they could create DNA or RNA. Can I ask you, how does this get you to the God belief? Like, how does so, how do so, these yeah, experiments yeah, yeah. Okay, lead so to like, the ninety-eight percent confidence in God? I just I don't see a way of life spontaneously generating, and I don't see a way if you like if you were to talk to my astrophysics pal. Sure. 
And if you talk to him, I cannot see a way of the world or the the universe spontaneously. Jacob, can I ask you a question? Yeah, I'm wondering. So you have this discover, you have this theory that's presented in the scientific model, uh -huh. and it sounds incredible. And you say that sounds. I can't see how that's feasible yet. Uh huh. Therefore, this completely this must, other thing. Uh huh. How did how did that how is that your foundation? How did that become? The I wouldn't I wouldn't say plan? that's my foundation. That's just like part of. Or how does this being hard to believe uh -huh. make this ninety eight percent confident? Like how? Oh, okay. How did that become the alternative at a ninety eight percent confidence level? Like was uh -huh. that the reason why you're ninety eight percent? I think that's just part of it, and I think um, if you look into other parts um, of my faith, uh, so like it's kind of hard to explain, and I it, it's kind of all feeling, right, from a skeptic's point of view. Um, there are some things in your life that you just kind of you have a gut instinct, gut instinct that you that you know it's true. Are um, gut instincts ever wrong? Oh, all the time. <laughs> if they can be wrong all the time, does it uh -huh. justify supporting a 98% confidence? From a logical standpoint, no. What is getting you to that 98%? I'd say... So, a belief in, in certain things in the Bible. So, one of the big arguments in apologetics is why would 12 people um, who followed Jesus around, heard what he said and then saw him die, lie about him coming back to life only to, only to know that they were going to be persecuted and put to death mm. for saying that. Mm. Like, Does that get you to the that, That's kind of like the main thing. It's like Is the biology the main... Biology aspect, and then that as well. I'm just going to test Go if that, that is actually uh -huh. your main thing. I'm going to ask you a question. If it turned out, this is kind of weird. And I'm, no, go ahead. Again, I'm just stimulating conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if it turned out that there was substantial evidence to a criteria of your satisfaction uh -huh. that they were in fact lying, uh -huh. would that reduce your confidence Probably. from 98 percent down? Probably, to like yeah. Maybe 70, uh -huh. maybe a lower than that. Probably. Okay. Can I throw? Can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh -huh. Say I had a, um, I don't know. I got. A, I have a cat. Uh -huh. I do have a cat. And he's a What's really his cute name? cat. His name's Vinny. Vinny. And I walk him on a leash, and he's a yeah. black cat. And he's super, super you cool. You walk your cat on a leash? I walk my black So listen, when I, so I, I used to work overseas for a while. Okay. It's very common over there. In Sweden, uh -huh. everyone's walking their cats around. In America, they keep them locked up indoors. And yeah. I'm like, that cat wants to be outside. That's why uh -huh. he's in the window. And if you leash train them really young, they're super, super cool about it. But um, it's not so much the leash training. It's just, would you believe me if I told you I had a cat, and I showed you a picture of the cat, and like I'm holding the cat? Like, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. If I told you um, I actually have a tiger, and his name is Marshall, and uh -huh. he's a full-blown full blown Bengal tiger, and yeah. I have a picture of him, and it's me and the tiger. Would you yeah. believe I have a tiger then? It'd be tougher. It'd be harder to believe. It would be believe. harder to believe. Yeah. Uh -huh. If I told you I had a purple dragon from <laughs> Jupiter that came and visits me in a time uh -huh. machine, and I had a picture of the purple dragon, and there's like a DeLorean in the background, uh -huh. and it's a picture. It's yeah. the same picture. Would you believe that? I'd say it's Photoshop. It's <laughs> It seems like the more incredible the claim, uh -huh. the better the standard of evidence, or the, yeah, the standard yeah. of evidence uh -huh. improves. Would you say that God is more incredible than a purple dragon from Jupiter? I would, yeah. Uh -huh. So the thing isn't so much that, I, w I think the apologist angle is, hey, it, what's the likelihood of these 12 people lying? Uh -huh. It's like, Maybe it's not even that they're lying. It's just that that's a really low bar of evidence. Mm -hmm. It's basically 12 people saying, Tyrone has a cat. You believe that. Yeah. Tyrone has a tiger. 12 people said that. Maybe you'd believe it. Maybe not. Uh -huh. 12 people told you, hey, Tyrone has a purple dragon from Jupiter. It's like, I'm not uh -huh. believing that. Like, you need, you need more evidence yeah. to support uh -huh. that with. What if, it, what if it is a case of not so much that they might be lying, but that just may not be enough evidence to reach that conclusion as a definitive claim for at least 98% certainty that a god exists mm -hmm. since it's way more incredible than Purple Dragon. What do you think about that? All right, can you restate that question? Yeah, it's kind of a long question. Yeah. Do you have enough evidence to justify 98% mm -hmm. confidence in God? And if it's not on uh -huh. that 12 apostle story, yeah. uh -huh. what else is getting you to that level? What else? Hmm. 
I'd say I can't answer that just right, right now. I'm totally fine with that. Uh -huh. Can I can I throw one last? Oh yeah, go ahead. If I had a coin, uh -huh. it's a quarter. It's not a trick coin. Uh -huh. If I flip it and I catch it, put it on the back of my hand. I don't know if it's heads or tails. Mm -hmm. Do you know if it's heads or tails? No. That's the best answer. Yeah. Until we have better evidence. Uh huh. Jacob. All right. It's wonderful talking to you. Nice talking to you. <laughs> that was really cool. Huh? <laughs> so, explain to me what you do exactly again. With this. Sure. Okay. So if you want, that here's a card. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, really positive, right? Also, it's a conversation. Like, we're not debating, we're not arguing. And also, when he needed the time to think, I gave him that time to think. And I think if he was asked those same questions, he would answer them differently. And I think that's the important part, because it shows that they are allowing themselves to critically think about the conclusions that they have, and whether they reach them in a reliable way or not. Um, I think this strategy is going to be really great for us. I think it'll be great for everybody. And I'm looking forward to the day where anybody can talk to anybody about anything. All we have to do to do it is to do it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ty. Yeah.